Welcome back to Let's Defend. Today we're going to run through one of the um, exercises from September. Currently it's December 1st. Uh, this back catalog appears to be accessible if you have a VIP membership. So what we're going to do is SOC 104, event ID 15. This is another malware detected event. Uh, looks like it was allowed on the device. It's executable. Looks like it was trying to pretend to be a updated or newer format Microsoft Office document. DocX. Uh, R00, which is usually a multi-part RAR. On the Katie machine. Alright, so let's go ahead and let's get ourselves added. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look here. As every time before, I'm going to copy and paste the info into a notepad. And we're going to go take a look here. So, 172.148.17.35. So we'll start at Log Management. And I've already opened this up in a different tab. There's no uh, traffic back and forth. If we go ahead and take a look at the endpoint, keys right at the top from a previous exercise. It was already in request containment. So let's take a look. Browser history. One of the previous SOC exercises had touched on as this being a command and control channel or an IOC that was originally missed when I went through it. That was a Philippines IP or domain. Uh, shows up again in network connections. Process list. So of course the big takeaway there is Our MD5 for the RFQ 9-18-2020-docx.r00.exe. So we take that hash, we dump it into virus total. And virus total reads it as 57 out of 70 anti malware engines detect this sample. Looks like it's a Agent Tesla. Uh, gone ahead and done or run it through or at least took the hash and submitted it through hybrid analysis and any dot run there were submissions that had already been done so this is the I think the latest one that was run through there looks like September 18th so basically gives it a threat score of a hundred out of a hundred 86% AV detection. And like always, these sections will be in the description of the video, all these notes with links to the actual run through. So we can see that it looks like it runs, fires up the task scheduler, and creates an item in there for it to run. So more than likely, we'll get asked uh, about persistence. Okay, so yes, this is obviously bad. And then the any.run, uh, let's see, September 21st. So three days after the hybrid analysis. And we have more of the same. So we see the executable run. We see that task scheduler was modified to create a task and we basically just see the malware running at least here in any.run it does confirm that this is rat operations which falls in line with what agent tesla is all right so we know that we've obviously got some badness and as it sits 
the workstations already quarantined. So let's go ahead. Everything here should be enough to move forward. Let's start the playbook. All right, the threat indicator. So this is going to be, since it established persistence using the task scheduler, it's going to be uh, for defining the threat indicator. Unknown or unexpected services and applications configured to launch automatically on system boot. Because if memory serves me right, this was not one that... No, this was an allowed execution. Uh, back from my notes, device action allowed. So AV did not stop this, which is kind of odd. But then again, this is a scan result from December 1st. So there's been several months in between. Now and then then. All right, so we're going to go ahead and mark that. Is the malware quarantined? Well, considering the fact it was running, we're going to tell it no, even though we already had, uh, from a previous exercise, quarantine the workstation or request quarantine. Uh, we've gone ahead and already done the any run, virus total, and hybrid analysis. We already know that it is malicious. Now we need to include the artifacts. So I'll go back here. Grab the MD5. I got the red agent Tesla. Oh, crap. Ah, malware quarantine. No, it's malicious. So we're going to grab that mail.davabay.com.ph. That's, well, it's not really URL address. I'll put some question marks there to finish everything off. All right, let's see what else we've got. Okay, so I don't see any sort of traffic. Uh, let's see, what do we have? Hey, look at that, mail.devaboy. We've got the IP address of 173-231-19830. So let's go ahead and go back and see if there has been anything else. Hey, look at that. Uh, let's see, 172.16.17.35, which, if memory serves me right, is not. Oh, no, that is Katie's workstation. Okay. Uh, add IP address. I'm fairly certain that that's on par, but uh, if as part of a, if this was a group team exercise, be able to sit there and have somebody else take a look at it just to confirm. 
And so let's take this and let's just do this in reverse to see if there's anything else. No, so there's nothing outside coming in. This is just inside going out. Okay, so we've got all that. Go next. Considering the fact that nothing else is actually flagging, at least from the logs, we're going to say no. Although from a previous exercise, I am fairly certain somebody else was reaching out to that mail, but it's not the same IP address if memory serves me right. Let's see, now we have a bigger problem. Well, I think the last exercise I did, I overthought true positive and false positive. So this alert was generated. It is indeed an actual issue. So we're going to go true positive this time. Since the last exercise, it was allowed through or no, it was the thread intel did not. And the hit listed as a 5 out of 10, listed as spam, even though it looked like it was a lot more dangerous than that. So we'll go true positive and ret infection of Katie. Tesla, or Agent Tesla. Okay. Recommend Nuke and Pave. Okay, so let's see as to whether or not if I'm more on track now with true positive and false positive. Is there access to the malicious address? I thought there was access from other people. Well, I guess I'll have to look at the video playback and make the determination. Maybe I'm just running through the questions too fast and not actually reading. But there we go. SOC 104, malware detected.